Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to do things a little bit different because I want to start off with gun talk because something's going down right now, and a lot of people have been contacting me about it and asking me what I think. Uh, well, what's happening is it appears Colt is selling out. They are uh, selling the business. They are going out of business. They will no longer be an American-owned uh, manufacturer. It seems Colt is selling to CZ. You know, everyone knows CZ. They make the CZ-75B and all these other guns. So that's one less American gun manufacturer we have anymore. Uh, in fact, it's getting to where do we have any anymore? <laughs> uh, it's more likely that a foreign company is making guns domestically, which I'm okay with. I like that too, employs American workers. But it's getting to where almost all the gun companies are owned by foreign entities. So uh, people are asking me, how do I feel about that? Because they know I love Colt. Well, I do love Colt. I think they make awesome guns. I have old Colts. I have new Colts. I think they're all pretty nice. I even have a couple Colt ARs. I like Colt almost as much as I like Smith & Wesson revolvers. But, you know, uh, there's kind of mixed feelings about this. Because, like I said, uh, I am a little upset that an American company that is one of the probably the most uh, synonymous names with America as far as firearms are concerned, Colt, you know, that's pretty much a big name in our history. When you think of cowboys, what do you think of? You think of Colt six shooters. So it is kind of sad. It's like the last chapter of, a, of an American story here that Colt is selling out to a foreign company. And it is sad. Uh, but let's face facts. Colt had fallen by the wayside for a while. They weren't making great products during the 80s and 90s. Their tooling was getting so old that their 1911s were sloppy and things were not great. I had a bad one. I had a lemon right out of the box. Uh, but recently they've been trying to get things back together. But still then they made some bad decisions. They started remaking some of the snake guns, etc. And that's been very successful for them. But they also uh, decided at a very inopportune time to stop servicing the civilian AR market. And not only did they stop doing that, but they were very bad at being able to let people know why they were doing it. They weren't doing it because AR is bad, revolver is good, which a lot of people thought. They were doing it because, hey, our revolver line is being profitable right now. And we want to center on that because no one buys our ARs because they're overpriced. Well, except for idiots like me. So that's what they were trying to do, but their management was not good at getting their message across. So they pissed off a lot of people. And they basically pulled out of the AR market right before some big spikes at AR sales and gun sales, some of the biggest gun sales <laughs> you know, in history. And they were like, crap, we got to get back into the AR market. So they shot themselves in the foot quite often over a cult. Uh, but I like to try to remember the good times. It's like an abusive relationship. I like to be like, well, you know, cult only made shitty guns when, when they were trying to make me be better, you know, something, something like that. Uh, but, you know, still love them, even though they made some mistakes. And like I said, they're getting a lot better now. They're really learning some lessons, but apparently too little too late. Uh, so I am sad that that's happening, that it's the end of an era. But there's also a good side to it because I love CZ. Uh, I have nothing against the Czech Republic. I think it's an awesome country. If I didn't live in America, people say, if you had to live somewhere in Europe, where would it be? I'm like, I usually say, probably be uh, the Czech Republic. It's probably where I'd choose to live. High education rates, you know, uh, pretty decent gun laws for Europe. <laughs> so uh, places that's one of the places I would choose to live over there if I had to. So I'm uh, okay about them owning it. If, if a foreign company is going to own it, I'm glad it's going to be CZ because they seem to be very effective at marketing products. They own, and they don't tend to feel the need to make every product they sell, you know, like say CZ on the side of it. They own other manufacturing companies that you probably don't even know they own. Uh, I own a few guns from a company you probably don't know they own, uh, like uh, Dan Wesson. I mean, I'm, people that are gun people would know that, but a lot of people that aren't gun people wouldn't know that. So they, uh, tend to be pretty good at keeping the brands separate. They don't feel the need to like, okay, we bought this company, so now we're going to alter all their designs a little bit and slap our names on them. No, they don't do that. That's not what they tend to do. They take something that works and let it keep working. 
So I think under the uh, what appears to be superior management of CZ, that maybe Colt will come into being a big company again. Uh, it won't be American owned like it was, but you know, nowadays what is, uh, sadly. I will worry more about where they're produced. Uh, I would much rather buy from a foreign company that makes their product here than I would an American company that makes all their products in China and then ships them back over here. Much rather do that. So, like I said, mixed feelings. I hate that it's uh, kind of a uh, an end to the story here for Colt as an American company, but I look forward to seeing what CZ could do with a company that does have such great patents, such great guns, such great designs. What CZ can do with them now that they might have some decent, competent management, we might see Colt become one of the premier gun makers once more. All right, now that we've done gun talk, I want to move on to our topic of the day. Now, today's topic is going to be a little bit weird. Uh, it's going to be a little odd for a gun channel. Of course, most of the stuff I do is odd for a gun channel because I'm not really a gun channel. I'm just a whatever the hell I want to do channel. Tonight, I want to talk about trespassing. And the reason I want to talk about it is because it seems like there's a lot of people that have a misconception about trespassing. They think it's only trespassing if you've been asked to leave. Until someone asks you to leave somewhere, you can't possibly be trespassing. And the reason I want to cover this is because there is a such a thing as trespassing with a firearm, especially criminal trespass with a firearm. And I would hate to see someone who carries a gun get charged with that just because they didn't understand the law because they listened to someone on the internet instead of actually talking to their attorney. And as someone who's owned private businesses, etc., cetera, uh, I've had to deal with trespassing. And uh, I want to explain to you something here. There are different types of trespassing, first off. There's trespassing against a person's person, you know, like assaulting them, kidnapping them, etc. There's trespassing uh, against items, like using an item that you didn't have permission to use. But the most common trespass, the one we're all concerned with, is trespassing against property, being somewhere you're not supposed to be. And a lot of people seem to believe that unless someone asks you to leave, you're not trespassing. And I think where a lot of people are getting this from is... If you have implied consent to be somewhere, either direct or implied consent, you can be there until they rescind that uh, permission. And that's like if you go into a business, that's implied consent. They've opened their doors to the public. There's nothing more than direct or implied consent than saying that. Open, please come in and buy our products. Well, if you go in there, uh, you have every right to go in there. And if they decide they don't want you there anymore, they have to ask you to leave. And then if you come back after that, that's trespassing, criminal trespassing, because you've been asked to leave. Even though there was implied consent, you've been asked to leave. And implied consent doesn't have to be that uh, straightforward. The very fact that you have an open sidewalk to your front door and a knocker on your front door uh, and societal norms say that it's okay to knock on doors, that means there's implied consent. In your society, it's okay to walk up someone's open walkway, knock on their door. You're not trespassing unless they tell you to leave. If someone has a garage sale and you pull up in front of their house, get out, walk in their garage, that's not trespassing. By having the sale in their garage and opening it to the public, they're giving you implied consent to come in their garage. Now, if you open the door and go to their kitchen, different story. Uh, there was no implied consent for you to do that. If you climb over a fence, no one has to ask you to leave for that to be trespassing. That's trespassing. In fact, in most states, if you climb a fence, go uh, 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 evade a locked door, or enter property that is posted no trespassing, or has posted open hours and closed hours, you're trespassing criminal trespass right off the bat. Now, regular trespass is a civil matter. It's usually not something police handle. Criminal trespass is something different. Like if a business has business hours on the door, Let's say Chick-fil-A closes at nine, but they forgot to lock the doors tonight. You go up and you go to open the door and it's open, but you're like, oh, it's after hours, but door's not locked. So I'm going in, make me a sandwich. Cops show up, you're criminal trespass, illegal entry, all kinds of different things you're going to get there. So you don't have to be asked to leave. Now in states that have like uh, the no carry signs, this is one of the things I think people got this from. Uh, if your sign does not bear the weight of law, 
meaning that that sign out front does not directly legally prohibit a person from entering with a firearm, well, then if someone enters with a firearm, you have to ask them to leave first before it's a crime. If you live in a state where that sign does rescind your permission to enter, where it removes that implied consent for anyone carrying a firearm legally, all you have to do is enter and you've committed a crime. That's why I want a lot of people to know this. If you live in a place where the signs do carry the weight of law, that means they rescind your ability to enter that, uh, that your invitation to enter with a firearm. And entering with a firearm, criminal trespass with a firearm is not a charge you want to face. And a lot of people, like I said, think, well, they never asked me to leave. Uh, they never asked you to leave that Chick-fil-A either. You're still going to get arrested and get in trouble. Uh, and even though like there's implied consent to walk up to someone's front door, there's not implied consent to go around their house at night. Societal norms don't allow that. That's trespassing. You can get charged with criminal trespassing for that. And if you have a firearm on you, it can be a worse charge in a lot of states. So be aware of the actual law. You do not have to be asked to leave under certain circumstances. In a court of law, and this is directly from one of my cases, a judge flat out said that the attorney was correct in saying that he did not have to prove that that guy knew he was doing something wrong. All he had to prove is that that guy was in an area that a reasonable person would know they are not allowed to be. That's all he had to prove. And since our sign said we closed at 1 p.m. or 2 p.m., I think it was, him being there at 4 in the morning, he knew he wasn't supposed to be there on our patio. So that was criminal trespass. So don't take legal advice from the internet. Don't take it from me even. If you want to be more sure of this, go speak to a local attorney because things in your state might be a little different. I've lived in Washington, Oregon, Florida, West Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, uh, Arizona, New Jersey, pretty much all the same in all those states I've lived in. But like I say, I haven't lived in all states and I've only owned businesses in three of those states to where I actually had to deal with this stuff. So your state might be different. Take some advice from an attorney if you want to be sure. But I just want everyone to kind of have a clear idea of what trespass actually means. And I don't want anyone to feel secure because if you go somewhere you're not supposed to be and act a fool with a firearm on you, that can be a serious charge. And you don't have that reassurance of going, I can go up there and act a fool until they ask me to leave. That's not usually the case. Uh, unless I said it's someplace you have implied consent to be. Like, walking up to someone's door. And even like that, like I said, like walking up to someone's door, like their front door, that's implied consent. If they have a gate and that gate is locked, you have no implied consent. Even if the lock is not locked, if it's in the lock, this is from an actual case I actually researched before I did this video. Uh, if the lock is in the door, but it isn't sealed, the lock itself is not sealed, if you reach through and pull the lock out and enter, criminal trespass. Because the lock itself was telling you, you are not allowed to be in here. The very fact there's a lock and gate. Uh, and there's also lots of different state laws about, uh, you know, if you're the land borders government land or private or, or public land. And if what kind of uh, delineation is there between the properties? Is there a fence? Are there signs? You know, just accidentally strolling onto someone's property is not criminal. Like if I'm walking out of the woods and I just cross across someone's property... That's not criminal trespass. That's just a case of civil trespass. It's still trespass. I'm trespassing on their property. I'm on their property without any implied consent or without their uh, actual consent. But it's a civil matter. Not a big deal. You're not going to get arrested unless they ask you to leave and you don't leave. If I've been told, do not come in here. If it says, no trespassing, I have to climb a fence or something like that, then... It's an issue of criminal trespassing. I don't want to put myself in that situation. Same thing with closed businesses, etc. So like I'm saying, if it's a place that you know a reasonable person is aware that they're not allowed to be, or if you're in a place where a certain sign on the door removes that consent for you to be there if you're armed, then don't go there and don't go there armed. I just wouldn't go there. If in my state, those signs that say no firearms bore the weight of law, I wouldn't go in them period. I'd just stay home. I wouldn't uh, uh, go to that business. 
wouldn't patronize them. Or I guess that word always sounds like you're looking down on them when you say that, but I guess that's the right word. Uh, I wouldn't give them my money. Let's just say that. But if it does carry the weight of law, which meaning that implied consent is removed, well, then you can be charged just for being in there, so don't go either. So I hope I've made this clear to people because I know it's rambly and I know it's blah, blah, blah. But no, in most cases of criminal trespass, you're probably not going to have been asked to leave. Unless, of course, it's someplace like in an open business or at a friend's house or something like that. Uh, a lot of times it's just going to be the fact that you are there without in, uh, uh, in, a consent or invitation, invitation, and you're there for the wrong reasons. And that's another thing that comes into account that's another matter entirely. If you are trespassing and it can be shown that you were there with ill intent or if you actually do something wrong while you are trespassing, like similar to the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, if you're there on property that's after hours, it's closed, a reasonable person knows they're not supposed to be there, and then a crime occurs on the property that you're involved in, those are more charges. I'm not saying Kyle committed a crime, but the guy who attacked him definitely did. Kyle did commit crimes, but not murder. But I don't want to get into that again. Uh, but just like I wanted to say, just make sure if you're somewhere with your gun, it's someplace you have at least implied content, uh, a consent that you can be because you do run the risk of trespassing. If it's a closed business after dark and they don't want you there, any reasonable person knows that's not someplace I should be. I shouldn't be in someone's side yard in the middle of the night looking in their windows. <laughs> not a place to be. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Like I said, there's differences between regular trespass and criminal trespass. Things differ from state to state. But as a general rule, in a lot of circumstances, you do not have to be asked to leave first. So do not think that that will protect you. All right. As usual, I want to end the show today with our viewer EDC of the day. And today we have Artem D. And Artem is carrying a gun that a lot of you probably aren't used to seeing as a carry gun. He's carrying a Ruger LCRX in 22 long rifle, an eight shot Ruger LCRX in 22 long rifle. And he appears to be carrying it in a Galco holster. Now, Artem said he's carrying the 22 long rifle because this is his first gun. It's the first one he bought. And he bought a 22 because he needed a 22 pistol around the homestead. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of people have farms or property. They want a 22. Very useful. So that was the first gun he bought. It's the only gun he owns. So he's now carrying it also on his job as a truck driver. And he says, not only does he carry it when he's driving his truck, but he carries it at home too. And he says his friends make fun of him and say he's crazy for carrying a gun in his home. Uh, and to that I say, that's crap. It doesn't mean you're crazy. I do the same thing. I carry my gun right now. I'm at home. I carry my gun from the time I get up in the morning and put my pants on till the time I go to bed at night and take them off. And I don't do that because I'm afraid I'm going to get attacked in my home. I do that because I'm absent-minded. And if I take my gun out at any time, set it down, like if I set it on the back of the toilet or I set it on my bedstand or I set it on the coffee table, later in the day, I am inevitably going to go, where's my gun after I go somewhere? Because I'm going to forget to put it back. So I have to keep my gun on me all the time or I'll forget it. Uh, there's no taking it out, putting it back in. I just have to put it in and leave it there or I will forget it. That's just absent-mindedness. So I don't think that's crazy. Uh, but the main thing he wanted to ask me tonight is, do I approve of him carrying a 22 long rifle? Because it is kind of, you know, not what most people would consider an acceptable gun for carry. Uh, it's not normal. <laughs> it's not what I'd call the average carry gun. But I'm going to say... It's going to protect you. I mean, if you're in that cab of your truck and someone comes up to the window and tries to climb through, I don't think a couple shots of 22 to the face is going to make them happy. I think it's going to give you a big advantage. Carrying any gun puts you ahead of 95% of the people in the world, no matter what it is. So as far as it being a 22 long rifle, you realize that's not optimal. He even said he's saving for a Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. That's going to be a second gun. Once you get that, carry that. But for now, that'll do the job. 22 is going to be fine. But I am going to say one thing. Uh, you wanted my approval. You asked me if I approved or not. And I'm going to have to say I do not approve of the way you're carrying, period, what you're carrying. It's not so much what you're carrying. It's how you're carrying. Uh, based on this picture, you're carrying a brown holster with a black belt. And I'm sorry, there are some things that are just too uh, important to overlook, too sacrilegious to ignore, and that's one of them. So although I think your 22 is capable and will serve you until you can get something else, 
uh, this just doesn't fly and no, I don't approve. But other than that, you don't need my approval, I guess, so keep it up. And that is our concealed carrier of the day, our viewer EDC, Artem D with his Ruger LCRX 22 long rifle. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you come back tomorrow. Until then, I want to sign off, as usual, by saying, as far as the state of the world is concerned today, you know, it is what it is. But what it will be in the future, if we keep our heads about us, we don't do stupid shit. We ignore the fear mongers and the profiteers and the people that want to keep us scared and angry so that we're easily milked and manipulated. And I mean milked of our money, not like, you know, milk, milk. If we ignore those people, what things will be in the future is better. <laughs>